If you're going to play the story and play the game, you have to play in your role. If you're a woman, you have a certain role in the hierarchy. If you're a man, you have a certain role in the hierarchy. If you're a church, you have a certain role in the hierarchy. If you're in part of the government, you have a certain role in the, in the hierarchy. Even the angels know this. Even the demons understand hierarchy. But what, they, what the evil people understand is that you take and attack the God-ordained hierarchy and you replace it with another hierarchy and you replace it with a hierarchy of the unnatural, of the hybrid, of that which doesn't fit. Because that's the only way you're gonna make it fit. That's what we're doing. That's what they're doing. Now, here, what, what, is, what does Jacob call his people to do? Because now he's, he's, he's awake now, and he realizes what's been going on, and God, that God's calling his attention, so the first thing he does, is, and Jacob says to his household and to all who are with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Then he says, purify yourselves and change your garments. Now, I'll deal with purify yourselves and change your garments in just a bit, but let's deal with put away the foreign gods. Wait a second. I thought Jacob worshiped the God of the Bible. Well, he does, but what has he allowed? He's allowed his own family members, including Rachel, by the way, to worship foreign gods. Worship Yahweh, worship your Canaanite gods or whatever. Remember, when they leave, Rachel takes the foreign gods with her. What? That's his own wife. He's not even monitoring his own wife. His hands are off the wheel. His wife is an idolater. So the first thing he does is, all right, time out. We're going to go back to God. And he's the only one true God. Enough with these foreign gods. So what does he do? Let us arise and go up to Bethel where we're gonna worship the one true God, and I will make an altar there to God, the one true God, who answered me in the day of my distress and have been with me in, in, which, in the way which I have gone. So we're only gonna worship one true God here in this family. That, and we're gonna start the nation off right, you know, not with a bunch of foreign gods. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which uh, were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree, which is by Shechem. Now, let's, let me explain this. The earrings is, that was a, it's not like earrings today. The earrings represented the, the, the pagan deities, of good luck charms, and stuff like that. Um, so what he is saying is, look, this junk of these idols, we're going to put into the ground. And really what the Hebrew is trying to say is, we're going to bury it. And when we bury it, it's never coming out of the grave. We're going to bury it once and for all. We're done. We're done with this. That's what he's doing with them. That's a good start. If we in the United States could get rid of the foreign gods that are in the United States that are controlling people, we would be really good. So for instance, what, what's disheartening um, about things in America is you have the Democratic uh, platform and, and, and that's just ungodly. They, they, they had a platform where God didn't even, they, they exited God out of their Democratic platform. And now the Republicans seem to be embracing idolatry in their own convention. And I'm, I'm not saying any of the parties are, are perfect. I'm not saying that. But this is disheartening because you're bringing in foreign gods. So at the Republican convention, you had the Sikh praying to some war god of the Hindu gods. I'm sorry, I, I, that does not work. Uh, or, or you put Amber Rose in there from OnlyFans porn creator who runs something called Slut Walk, which is a feminist protest. What? What? Why would the Republicans say, we want to put these people in front? Why? You know what it is? It's idolatry. Whether it's Democrat or Republican, they're, they're making the mistake. You're not going to get the country back by teaming up with a Hindu praying to a Hindu god. It's not going to happen. Sorry, I'm not politically correct. There's only one god. The Hindu god is false god or it's Satan. Sorry, just telling you. When we misplace God as a priority... And this is the subtlety of, of idolatry. The reason people go into idolatry, it's not because, oh, I want to worship a foreign god. It's not like that. It's subtle in the fact that I'm going to worship, I'm going to, I'm going to bend my life towards this unifying principle that gives me my idiosyncratic, illicit desires. Okay? That's how it works. It's not them saying, I'm going to worship the god of the tree. It's not that. It's, I like this principle for what it gives me. So I will worship at the, the altar of the LGBT agenda. 
or I will worship at the altar of the transgender agenda because it gives me what I idiosyncratically desire even though it's illicit. You see, that's what I, why it's tempting to go into idolatry because you worship these principles or these foreign gods and they give you what you want. They allow you to do what you want to do. You go to the God of the Bible and you say, hey, is it all right to be a transgender? No, nope. okay, next. That's it. So you, 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 they don't go to the God of the Bible. That's why they're so angry at him. So they go to a foreign God. Maybe it's the cotton candy Jesus of, of, of wokeism or whatever, and that cotton candy Jesus says, I can be a transgender. Okay, I'm going to follow him. That's how it happens. That's how subtle it is. I just follow whatever gives me my desires, even though my desires are, are, are natural, even though my desires are, are defiling me and defiling the culture and defying the society I, I come into. And then what happens with idolatry? Follow me on this, or I'll lose you like a wet bar of soap in a shower. Here's what happens. Behind the idol, behind the principle that you're following is a demon, okay? Paul will say behind the idol is a demon, okay? So it's, I don't care if you're worshiping a rock or you're worshiping a principle. There is a demon or demons behind LGBT ideology. There is demons behind transgenderism. It's called hybridization. They're hybrids. There, there is demons behind Marxism. There is demons behind globalism and all that. Other stuff. So any principle that's you know, out of concert with God has a demon behind it that's working behind the scenes, and this is the subtlety of, of how they trap you. The demon will actually give you some feedback to keep you in the game. It keeps you pulled in. It will keep you going. And so people, they, it, what happens is they see, oh, I get something back out of this. And so what they start realizing is there's a bargaining chip they're, they're dealing with that I make sacrifices to this foreign God and that foreign God allows me to live the lifestyle I want to live. So right now, for instance, we're sacrificing on a cultural scene to Gaia. Just want to let you know. You say, well, I'm not involved now. I know we're not involved. But the culture is because they're saying, look, we have to reduce our energy consumption. We have to stop drilling we have to stop uh, uh, you know, uh, drilling for gas and oil, and we got to go to electric vehicles, which none of us can afford. We don't have the grid, and it's going to kill us economically because what are we doing this for? We're sacrificing to Gaia. That's why. And, and, and we have to save Gaia, so we need to sacrifice you and depopulate the planet and go green to make your sacrifices to her. That's what, in effect, we're doing. That's another god. And then what happens is, once that idol is put in that place of the highest position other than God, it creates an orientation of life and culture throughout the entire society. So everything gets oriented and lined up to that. That's why it's so important. Like when you saw God appear to Israel on Mount Sinai, what, what is he on top of? A mountain. Heaven is on a mountain. Did you know that? So, but, but why put himself there? Because a mountain forms a peak, and at the top of the peak is God. And everything is aligned to him from that mountain, right? The whole mountain lines up from the peak. It's a metaphor of saying God must be the priority of, of, on top of everything. And if he is not, and you exalt something from creation on top of that peak, you have idolatry at that point. You have put something in the highest spot that only belongs to God. And so, so when you see idolatry, think about a mountain peak, Mount Sinai, and then putting another foreign god instead of the Yahweh on top of that. And then everything aligns from that. That's how it works. 